Pastor Ben. Well, good morning. We are so glad that you guys decided to join us on this nice, beautiful day. It's so good to see all your uh, shining faces. I just want to say, Clyde and Bonnie are back there. We've been praying for you guys. It's so good to see you. I, uh, I haven't seen Clyde since I came for my interview, so <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, and I just have a couple of announcements for you guys. If this is your first time uh, being here, we're so glad that you would join us today. And um, we have a gift for you back at our Connection Center in the foyer. So if you, if this is your first time, before you head home today, would you just swing past there? I believe Mary's back there and she has a gift for you or somebody's back there and has a gift for you. Um, and if you would grab your bulletins and look... Um, you'll see that we have many Bible studies throughout the week, and I would encourage you to get in at least one of them. We have ones that are ju just for men, one that are, we have a prayer meeting that's just for the girls on Tuesday. Um, we, have a, we have one if you're interested in prophecy on Friday night. We have many, many, many Bible studies, and I encourage you, get, a, get in it, get in God's Word, because that's where we're challenged and we grow together. The Bible says, as, as iron sharpens iron, so a brother does to another so that's why get involved, be a part of what we're doing in our Bible studies. And don't forget, we have service tonight. We have service on Wednesdays. Um, we, we have our kids services on Sunday mornings and on Wednesday nights. We have youth and you guys want to be here. If you're a youth in the house, we're having our Christmas party this Wednesday. Wear the ugliest sweater you, you can find. I have a prize for the ugliest sweater. So you want to show up, you want to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. And... Just some other things that I want you guys to be aware of is we ha we are collecting things for certain groups. Um, we are collecting non-perishable foods to bless others. So if you can help us out by bringing cans and, and things like that, canned foods, and bring them to the church, um, we need those by the 20th. But we're also needing blankets and pillowcases and fuzzy socks for some girls who can't go home that are in the, I'm not sure where they are. I, I, I heard them talking about it. But I know what it is. It's, I think it's a girl's home, and we're going to be blessing them. Green circle, yes, right? Is that right? But you bring, bring some gifts. If you can bring the blankets, bring some pillowcases and some socks to bless them. There's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer. And one important note for you guys to make. It says here that we are doing uh, Christmas caroling on the 23rd. Well, Christmas caroling has been moved to the night of the 20th. So Sunday, December 20th. The evening service, we're going to meet here, and then we're going to go to the senior living apartments, and we're going to Christmas carol. So I, I encourage you, come join us, spread some cheer, and, and encourage people that Christ has come. But that also means on December 23rd, we will not be having services in person here. So, so take the evening, spend it with your family, get some rest, get ready for Christmas. If you're like me and you're a last-minute shopper, that's when I'm going to start shopping on the 23rd. Amen. <laughs> But if we could have the ushers come at this time, we're going to uh, get ready to take our Sunday morning tithe and offering. And I just want to thank you guys for your faithfulness in giving. You know, uh, I haven't been here long, but uh, I just want you to know that Jerry has praised you multiple times to me about how you guys have been so faithful in giving. And I just want to encourage you, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So this morning as we get ready to give... Um, Give cheerfully, knowing that you're, gi you're giving to help serve the kingdom. Bill, would you bless the offering this morning?
Thank you, Miss Becky. Now, all you married gentlemen, don't take that too literally. Don't get too restful. Fall asleep now. Thank you, Miss Becky. You know, I was thinking this morning, it really is good to be here. Some of you would say, as old as I get, it's good to be anywhere. It really is. How many things we take for granted in the world that we have? My goodness. I was reminded this morning, there was a generation, majority of generations, probably thousands of years of people. We're one of some of the few in the history of mankind have experienced indoor plumbing. You laugh. Anybody in the room live without indoor plumbing? Amen. You still have a few. How about electricity? Now, with electricity comes refrigerators. We used to call them ice boxes. Okay. Store food, electric stoves, gas stoves, microwaves. Well, some might still choose to use coal oil. Automobiles. How did everybody get here today? How long did it take you to get here today? We got one that walked. <laughs> Always has to be one in the bunch. Well, you walk to school uphill both ways, five miles in the snow, and right? That's, that's, I think you told me that one time. You really stop and think about it. You didn't have to raise, most of you didn't raise your own food, right? Now, some of you enjoyed the bounty of your kill recently. Thank you, Matt Simpson. He tithed his deer. I'm looking for the rest of you. He didn't. The rule is you tithe, right? We're good hog suckers, right, Mark? Think about how blessed we are. And the majority of the world in history never knew what you and I know. Well, ask yourself, have we ever complained? I'll be the first to raise my hand. Anybody else complain? Everybody? It, you know, you get accustomed. We get, we get contented and comfort with these things that the majority of the world never had. The majority of the world can never dream about those things. Incredible flight. Uh, it amazes me. And we're, we're sending ordinary citizens up in space now. You know? Amazing. It just kind of hit me this morning. How thankful am I for all of these things the majority of the world never experienced this morning. Then it brought me to my health. You know, he's able to get up, put your feet on the floor. Have a bite of breakfast, get dressed, go to those convenient things like automobiles, turn on the heat or the AC in them, come to a heated building with comfy chairs, all of this. You can turn on a large screen television and watch the news from around the world, be entertained. How easy it is to find ourselves in a contented but sometimes complaining attitude. And uh, I don't think God really wants us to go there, does he? I know he's been speaking to my heart. Are you thankful for the things you've been blessed with? And sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I lose sight of that. And I have to be brought back into line with, with God's goodness. Amen. Amen. How many of you know what an aptronym is? You know what an aptronym is? It's a compound word that consists of the, it consists of the adjective apt, apt, which means aptitude. In the Greek, which is a Greek word, Greek word for name. An aptronym is when someone's name and occupation line up perfectly. It means when what they're, called, <clears throat> what, what they're called describes what they do. And here are a few examples. Dr. Bowser is a veterinarian. These are actual names, by the way. Uh, Roy Grout, he's a bricklayer. <laughs> Believe it or not, there is a Dr. Wack. He's a chiropractor. Dr. Wack. You saw him, didn't you, Bill? You saw Dr. Wack? How about Dan Druff? He's a barber. Dan Druff. It's, these are actual names. Dr. Pullen. Can you guess what he is? He's a dentist. Yes, Dr. Pullen's a dentist. <clears throat> now, this one, this is kind of a German name, but this is actually true. Otto Nogo. He's a mechanic. Have you ever had an Otto Nogo before as your mechanic? Dr. Smiley, orthodentist, huh? orthodentist. Sonia Shears, guess who? Hairdresser, yeah, hairdresser. 
<laughs> this is Dr. Whitehead. He's a dermatologist. Can you imagine what this one does? Dr. Smelzy. Podiatrist. That's a foot doctor. Or my mother-in-law and Nick both have been to this man. He's an he's a eye doctor, surgeon. He's a Dr. Blinder. <laughs> How many of you want to sign up to go see Dr. Blinder for your next eye checkup? And there are others. I remember when I was in college in Springfield years ago, and there was a at uh, one of the clinics there on campus, he was actually an orthopedist, and his name was Dr. Bonebreak. So there was a, there's an aptronym for you. I think he was a good doctor, too. You know, so. Have you ever stopped to realize how important names are to God? Right from the very beginning of the Bible, this is what we read. God called the light day. He gave it a name. In the darkness, he called night. God called the expanse sky, with the meaning of the name often characterizing their character. So Isaac, the name Isaac means laughter. Moses means drawn out. Jesus means, anybody know what Jesus means? Jehovah saves. Now, there are parents who spend a significant amount of time trying to come up with names for their children. Why is that? Because we know that a name is more than just what someone by. Some people are very strategic and they're specific when they're giving names. This morning, I want to look at four names given to Jesus. Okay, four names. So go to Isaiah chapter 9. These names were actually given to Jesus 700 years Prior to his birth, that would be like, Carrie, your mom named you in the year 1320, and 13, 700 years later, Carrie's going to be born. Oh, impossible, right? But not with Jesus. Not with Jesus. There are over 100 names in the scriptures that's associated with Jesus himself, and there's numerous others given to God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. It's been said by a missionary... Every name he bears is a blessing he shares. So why does God have so many names? Well, there was a missionary asked by the people of Congo. It's called Zaire now. And this is how he answered their question. The beauty and the fullness and the magnificence of his matchless person cannot be expressed by just one name. 